Hello and welcome back to Survival Existence. We're going to talk about generators today. Generators and how to maintain them. Uh, generators to be very useful not only for a power outage, but quite often they're useful on a homestead just simply being able to carry into the field and use a pole saw to prune trees um, or to use a grinder if you have something you need to uh, work on or even use a drill. In just a minute, we'll be back and welcome to a very hot summer, sultry day in the South. Welcome back to Survival Existence. The first thing we're going to do in an effort to maintain our generator, just like any other small engine, oil changes are very important. It's even more so with an engine like it's on this particular generator. It doesn't have an oil filter like both of my lawnmowers do. And as a matter of fact, most small engines around this place do have oil filters on. This one does not. Therefore, it's even that much more important, much like a push mower that doesn't have an oil filter to keep up with your oil changes and keep it changed regularly. No more than I normally use this generator. I change my oil once a year. Um, often the manufacturers just simply being on the safe side will tell you twice a year it's not necessary no more often than what this generator is run. Now, if the time came and I had to run the generator and run it quite a bit over a few days, I would most absolutely change the oil immediately after the need for the generator had ceased. As a matter of fact, it's a good idea to keep extra oil on hand just for changing oil during a crisis. Okay, the first thing we're gonna have to do is take the oil plug out. It's usually either located on the very bottom of the engine or it'll be on the side, like this one is right here. I'm gonna take that loose. I already have an oil pan and under the generator, and I also have this funnel that I'll slide in under that plug because it all, all the oil drops out and gets on that little cross member and it's just that much more trouble to clean up. So I figure the less oil, the less cleaning I have to do. Okay, here we go. You'll notice that oil plug wasn't horribly tight. They have pipe threads and they're designed intentionally that way so that it was seal. Um, over tightening it, you're just gonna have trouble getting it loose. If you don't get it tight enough, of course, it's going to leak or vibrate out. You do not want that. As you can see, that oil is not very old at all. I'm going to just let it sit and drain. We'll be back in just a few minutes whenever we're ready to refill the oil reservoir. Now that the oil has mostly stopped dripping, it's time to put the uh, plug back in. Before we replace the plug, you want to wipe it off real well and check your plug. Make sure it's not cracked. And also, this particular model comes with a fiber seal. You want to make sure that it's all in one piece, good and solid. Before you put the plug back in, you want to wipe the surface where it mates together. Make sure there's no buildup, dirt, and anything else there. Then simply just run it in finger tight. Okay, with it in, finger tight, you'll take your wrench. You'll snug it up pretty good. You don't want to make it just horribly tight, but you certainly don't want it loose either. You'll notice it gets more and more difficult the further the uh, plug goes in. That's because those threads are tapered. Like I said, it's uh, pipe threaded so that it assists in sealing it. Once it sits all the way down, then just tighten it up to where it's good and snug. You don't want it real tight, but you certainly don't want it loose either. That should be good enough. Once you've replaced the plug, make sure and wipe any piece of equipment, engine and the mounts down so that it doesn't uh, create a fire hazard. Of course, it's always nice to have a shop rag whenever you're doing any kind of job that involves oil, grease, or grime in general. Once you've replaced the drain plug and tightened it properly, next you'll 
need to take the dipstick out. That's normally where small engines are filled with oil. In this case, it's right next to the uh, drain plug. I'm going to remove it, and you need to take a funnel that is designed for getting in small spaces, such as a funnel like this. Okay, now I am going to check the oil to see if there's enough in there, as soon as I can find a good place to put that down so I don't have to worry about dirt or trash getting in it. And I'm going to wipe my hands off and check the oil find out how much more, if any, I need to add. So I'm going to put the dipstick back in and check the oil. And it's just right up to the top of the oil dipstick. That's where this particular model needs to be. In just a minute, we'll be back to do a few more other checks before we're ready to start and exercise our generator. Next, we'll need to clean the air filter. It's not complicated either. Most of them have a couple of these screws that turn out like that, thumb screws, and they just simply pop off like that. This is the filter in this. This is not very dirty because I have never used this uh, generator a whole lot. I've used it a little, but I'm going to take an air hose and clean this out anyway. Now I'll also blow the inside of the air cleaner out but I'll cover it lightly with a fairly clean cloth. You do not want to uh, blow any debris down into the carburetor. That would be bad. Now we will reinstall the air cleaner. Pay particular attention to which way it came out. You don't want to turn where the outside air is drawn into the engine, around towards the engine, you could still end up getting some debris in there. Always put the side that was back, back. And if you'll notice, this particular filter has a notch in it, corresponds with that notch right there. So you know that it goes back in that way. Then just simply reinstall the cover the same way you took it off. In just a minute, we'll be back. Normally, you would want to take the spark plug out, clean it well, and gauge it. I probably haven't put a total of two hours on this generator since I've checked it. So I'm not going to take it out at this time, but normally you would want to also do that. Now I've moved the generator out of the garage. You never want to run any kind of internal combustion engine in a garage even with the doors open because carbon monoxide tends to build up. Now that we have it outside we are going to check its operation to make sure it's functioning. First thing we want to do is turn the petcock on or fuel valve as they call it. We want to turn our choke to the on position and then turn our switch on making sure that the breaker is turned completely off. This switch switches to have only the 110, 120 volt plugs running or the plugs and this 220 volt plug and it doesn't matter as far as it's starting or not. Okay, we've got the switch on and it should start right on up. I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't smoke just a little bit after changing the oil. Small engines are very well known for doing that. And there it goes. The voltmeter says it's cranking out about 110 to 120 volts. Very good. The circuit breakers are all set. 
I can turn this on now. If something plugged up, it would be energized. I'll continue to let this generator run for just a couple of minutes in order to circulate the new oil and warm up the engine and lubricate all the gasket seals. Well, it's coming to a close of a very hot day. It stormed pretty hard this morning, rained quite a bit, and this afternoon the sun and its infinite wisdom has decided to come out. Therefore, it's about 96, 98 degrees, and the humidity is about 98 percent to go along with it. I hope you enjoyed this generator video. Um, take care of your equipment. It'll take care of you. If you like our video, please subscribe to Survival Existence. Come visit us on Facebook and visit us at survivalexistence.com. This has been Bobby, helping you with your generator. Helping you help yourself.